Hi everyone, I'm Phil Ivanik, staff writer on official PlayStation magazine. You know that certain type of game that sends game journalists all weak at the knees? And, ooh, did Bioshock just reference Atlas Shrugged? Delightful. Well, this one is exactly that type of game. There's a painterly art style for us to stroke our chins at, references to classic literature to pat ourselves on the back for understanding, and the people who created it, Victor Antonov, Rafael Antonio, Harvey Smith, they're the minds who gave us Half-Life 2, Arx Fatalis and that old stalwart best game ever, Deus Ex. Oddly though, as much effort as the team's gone to in creating Dunwall and making it feel like a tangible wailing town come Orwellian nightmare come plague-ridden Victorian London, this isn't the game's strength. You could lose hours of your life reading books in the various tenement blocks and bourgeois mansions, but the world just doesn't resonate with you like it should. The reason? Well, the game spans just nine levels, and two of those are locations you've already visited, though admittedly they're different in appearance and what they demand from you when you revisit them. It's just that that handful of locations isn't really enough to connect you with Dunwall, to immerse you in all the fiction Arcane Studios has obviously gone to pains to create. In short, it feels like you're being kept at arm's length from a fascinating and unique game world. Let's not dwell on the negatives though, because Dishonored's actual strengths obliterate any bad feeling. The game does a fantastic job of empowering you with an array of supernatural powers and steampunk weaponry. If you want to play it like a shooter, you can run about the place jabbing arrows in people's necks, attaching proximity mines called spring razors to dogs and shooting prostitutes in the knees, all in the name of overthrowing the tyrannical Lord Regent who framed you for murder and plunged the city into chaos. And if you take that approach, your fun levels will be exceeding even Darkness 2's with all its quad-wielding mayhem. Even better though, is Dishonored's approach to stealth. Traditionally, being stealthy means holding down crouch and waiting for guards to pass, maybe shimmying through the odd ventilation shaft. But in Dishonored, it's not a passive experience. Thanks to your supernatural abilities like being able to teleport short distances, possess people and, you know, stop time, there's always a sneaky solution that doesn't involve crouching and waiting for everyone to go away. When you get used to using those abilities in quick succession, you're having about as much fun as it's possible to have in a rat-infested dystopia where everyone wants to kill you. Possessing a fish and sneaking into someone's house through a storm drain is one thing, but stopping time when an angry, stilt-wearing protector of tyranny fires off an explosive, possessing him and walking into the path of his own projectile is next-level stuff. What really elevates Dishonored into the company of truly special games, the Half-Life 2s and Deus Exes, is the marriage between those mechanically near-perfect abilities and the multi-path intricate levels that you get to test them out on. It's especially impressive that the game's skill set lets you take on such wildly different approaches, and yet the levels never try to encourage one play style over another. They're consistently wide enough to let you experiment. And you will experiment. You play the whole game over and over in different styles because it makes you feel incredibly powerful and smart for combining powers in a certain order, in a certain situation. With just nine levels, some odd narrative pacing and a vague sense of being distant from the events around you. It doesn't quite reach perfect score territory, but it does come agonisingly close.